myths of morphine at the end of life. Hi, it's Katie here with Death Care Coach, where we help you better navigate the end of life process. In this video, we're going to be talking about one of the most common myths of morphine use at the end of life when someone is dying. Before we get started, if you want to support us, please hit the like, like and subscribe buttons below. All right, so let's get into it. So one of the biggest myths about morphine use at the end of life there is this question of, does morphine speed up death or does morphine speed up the dying process? There's a big myth that it does. Research shows that there is no evidence that opioids such as morphine speed up the dying process when a person is receiving the right dose to control the symptoms that they are experiencing. So what types of symptoms might morphine be used for at the end of life? Typically, morphine is used at the end of life for someone who is experiencing pain or some sort of physical distress, or for someone who is experiencing shortness of breath and sort of like labored breathing. There is some research that actually does suggest that using morphine to treat pain or shortness of breath near the end of life when someone is dying may actually help that dying person live a little bit longer, and that kind of makes sense. Pain and shortness of breath are really distressing and they're really exhausting for the body. And people nearing the end of life who are dying have really very limited to no strength or energy at all. So it does make sense that treating these symptoms, these distressing symptoms and relieving them from all of that pain or shortness of breath, all the distress they're under, might actually slow down the rate of decline that their body is going through, even if that's only for a few hours. Now, do we know if the dying person is experiencing pain or distress or shortness of breath in their later stages of the dying process when they're not able to communicate or vocalize, for example, when they're in this unconscious state of mind, when they're really actively dying days to hours before death? Well, no, not necessarily, but we're looking really at the whole picture. We're gonna look at that person and we're looking at their face. Are, is their face kind of grimacing? Do they have a wincing face? Are they scrunching their eyebrows? Or do they look like they have a clenched jaw? Do they look stressed? We also look at their body. Is their body really tense? We also look at their breathing. Are they using like extra muscles to breathe? Are they breathing really fast and really hard? All of those things can be really hard on somebody's body and really stressful for somebody's body. So morphine would be used in those situations to help relax the person's body and really just calm their breathing, bringing them some comfort and ease. If a dying person has never received morphine or another opioid before, they're considered what we call opioid naive. In this person, they are, if they are experiencing some form of distress that we just spoke about, pain or shortness of breath, the initial doses of morphine that are given are always low. And they're actually much lower than even what the FDA recommends giving somebody who is opioid naive. No matter who the person is, whether they've never had morphine before or whether they've had and are, are somewhat familiar and, and used to the effects of morphine, Clinicians and healthcare providers are held to strict high standards and legal standards to monitor that patient closely and carefully, and always being aware of how that person is responding to the medication that has been given. So they are constantly looking out for side effects, for adverse effects. They're looking out for how the person is breathing, whether the symptoms are still controlled, et cetera. They're always monitoring that patient after morphine has been given. Morphine is really able to be carefully and very slowly increased to relieve a person's level of pain or shortness of breath as needed. Again, I just want to make the point clear that healthcare providers are cautiously monitoring, and even if the person is dying at home, they are telling the caregivers at home what to look out for and what to notify the healthcare providers about if they see that, they see those side effects or adverse effects. Here is something else to note. After a few regular doses of morphine, the body is able to actually adjust to the medication. And so the person who's receiving that medication becomes less and less affected or less likely to be affected by the side effects of slowed breathing and of drowsiness as well. Looking at the research, respiratory depression, which means just slowed breathing that can lead to death, is most likely to occur with big dose increases over a very short amount of time or in the very first dose for someone who's never taken an opioid before. And that's why we give them in such slow doses. 
at the end of life, morphine doses are increased very slowly, very gradually, and really only as needed to maintain comfort for the dying person. It is strictly comfort based. Now, there is always going to be a last dose of morphine. So to someone at the bedside, to a family member or anyone caring for a person at the bedside when they're dying, it might seem like the morphine is what caused or contributed to that person's death, especially if death occurs within a few minutes. However, this dose does not actually cause the person's dying. It is simply the last medication given in the minutes or hours before the person's death naturally occurs that person, that dying person, would have died whether the dose of morphine was given or not. Morphine actually takes about 15 minutes to really start to take effect in the body and about one hour to reach its really like maximum effectiveness and it leaves the body within about four hours. Now, of course, everyone is different and morphine may, may act differently in different people, but again, the thing to remember is that at the end of life, Morphine is used specifically to provide comfort based on symptoms that the dying person is experiencing and the care team is always monitoring for signs of too much of the medication. I just want to pause for a second and say if you're finding this video helpful, please, 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 I would love it if you could hit that like and subscribe button below. Okay, let's move on. It's also important to really understand the difference between what it looks like when someone dies from the natural dying process and what that looks like and what it looks like to die from too much morphine. So when someone has received too much morphine, they usually can't be woken up. They are in this unconscious really state of mind. The person's breathing becomes slow and becomes shallow and their pulse ox or the oxygen level decreases. And breathing might be about eight breaths per minute or less. Again, the hospice or care team is always assessing and monitoring for these things and helping you monitor, helping you or whoever's at the bedside monitor and really know what to look for to decide whether too much morphine has been given and should be decreased. And that includes as a person is even nearing the last hours of their life when their kidneys and other organs are shutting down. In comparison, when someone is dying naturally through the natural dying process and all the natural bodily changes that occur to reach the point of death, in the last few minutes to hours or even days of the natural dying process, a person's breathing becomes irregular. Yes, they're also in an unconscious state, but we're really looking at their breathing. You'll notice that the person's breathing becomes faster and faster and deeper and deeper, and then it starts to kind of slow down and become shallower and shallower, and then you notice a long pause. And this pattern typically repeats. We see a fast and deep breath, faster and faster, deeper and deeper, and then shallower and shallower, and then there's a pause between each breath. The pause can be long, it can be short, but this is called chain stokes respirations or chain stokes breathing. These changes in breathing are a sign that the part of the brain that controls breathing is shutting down and that's a natural part of the dying process. Mm -hmm. The person might seem to be working really hard to breathe, but again, this is a natural and normal response to the body shutting down. If there are concerns about really how fast and how hard a person is breathing, because that can really look distressing and might be distressing, but we don't necessarily know if they can't verbalize, or if the person is gasping for air and that person really appears to just be in distress, then morphine can be given to help relax the person's body and allow their breathing to be at ease and to be more comfortable. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe by clicking the button below. And please, if you have any questions or you want something answered, please leave them in the comments below.